be with you. My name is Kathy Donovan, and I am one of the members of Crossroads United Methodist Church. I am so glad you could join us today. During the season before Christmas, which we call Advent, we consider the ways we as people, and in fact, the whole world, yearn to know the presence of God. We remember and celebrate Christmas with the arrival of the Christ child. I think that this year, the world is in desperate need of the hope that we rekindle at Christmas. And so we invite you to enter into Advent with us at Crossroads and light a candle of hope on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. There's a song in the air, there's a star in the sky, there's a mother's deep prayer, and a baby's low cry, and the star rains its fire while the beautiful sing, for the manger of Bethlehem cradles a king. We rejoice in the light. from Luke 1, 26 through 38 from the New International Version. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to get Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled by these words and wondered what kind of a greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary, asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. It's a bit of a paradox this year, isn't it? Singing joyous songs in the midst of a pandemic, especially since it's upended most of our plans. I got a little down when Christmas shopping this year. Uh, and of course, I've been shopping online for Christmas for several years, even though I was perfectly capable of going out to shop. But this year, shopping in a big crowd of people during a pandemic didn't seem wise. So online shopping it was. And this time it was because I kind of had to do it that way. It wasn't really a choice. So I was a little down about that. I'm sure like you, we always look forward to gathering with our families on Christmas Eve and on New Year's Day. But again, that's not a wise option to choose during a pandemic. So we'll do it on Zoom this year. I was a little down about that. <laughs> I also think it's important to be up to date with the events of the day or the week or the month. And so I look at several reliable news sources every day. The problem is there is more difficult news about the pandemic every single day. And while it's hopeful that there are vaccines on the way, 
uh, boy, we are just not out of the woods yet. And so uh, a little down about that from time to time. So long story short, at least for me, I've had to look around a little harder for the hope and joy this season. I'm sure I'm not alone. It's been a tough year for us all. As we've gone through Advent, we've been exploring the idea of finding hope in a weary world. Three weeks ago, we stretched back to the Middle Ages to hear traditional lines of yearning for the coming of Christ that make up the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Two weeks ago, the prophet Isaiah reminded us that even in difficult times, we matter to God. And last week, we took hope in the idea that Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, is the Prince of Peace and comes again to make things new. So today, just a few days before we celebrate Christ's birth, I want to explore the idea that even when hope is hard to see or find, when we are world-weary and pandemic-weary and election-weary, there may still be a song of joy to sing. So let me tell you about Isaac Watts. The Right Reverend Watts was a prolific hymn writer in England in the 18th century. He is the author of 12 hymns and a couple of musical responses, which are included in our hymnal. Among those are, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, Marching to Zion, and several others, especially one that I'll mention in a moment. Apparently, Isaac Watts was a bit of a child prodigy with languages. He was also thin, pale, smaller than average, rather homely, and is reported to have had a head that seemed much too big for his body. He had a rough childhood. He dealt with psychiatric issues his whole life and was scorned for the way he wrote hymns because he wanted hymns to have energy rather than always sounding solemn. Well, this all eventually led him to step aside from his pastorate very early in life, although he continued writing hymns, most of them based on psalms. Long story short, he had this difficult, cha challenging life and was often caught in moments of despair that would linger. And yet, in the midst of that despair and that weariness and sometimes for him hopelessness, he wrote perhaps the well, most well-known hymn of joy in our tradition, which is Joy to the World. In the midst of that psychological quicksand, he found depths of joy that resound through centuries to us as we sing that song every year. It's actually based on Psalm 98 and calls on all of creation to leap and clap for joy because of the coming of Emmanuel, God with us in Christ at Christmas. Even in his struggles, he found the joy in his faith. Well, the gospel lesson today offers the familiar episode in which Mary is visited by an angel and given some confusing, scary, and ponderous news. She would give birth to the Messiah. I've always been convinced that at the very beginning, Mary must have been scared and looking for something hopeful in the midst of it. I often chat with our deacon in residence, Reverend April Casperson, also the spouse of our music director, Zach. Uh, we chat about things theological and otherwise. Sometimes it's more otherwise than theological. Uh, but this week we talked a little about how Mary's story might be a window into our pandemic-influenced Advent and Christmas experience. And so here is a bit of our conversation. And we welcome April Casperson, our deacon in residence, to the sermon time at Crossroads this week. Uh, April, just tell us a little about how you and the family are doing as we get ready for Christmas in this uh, very unusual year. Oh, we're good. Uh, Chapin has figured out that Christmas is a thing and Santa is a uh, thing. Oh. And she really wanted, oh, I didn't tell you this, she really wanted a toy. And she was having a rough day. She started crying. She's like, I want it for Christmas. And Zach told her, well, Christmas isn't an, for another couple of weeks. She said, well, then I want it for the holidays. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that could start we're, now. <laughs> so we're good. But our little negotiator has figured out that Christmas <laughs> is a 
the thing, but we're good. All right. Jack's teaching and I'm working and we're just kind of pushing on right. toward Christmas break. Well, it's good to uh, pull you in. We get to see Zach every week, but it's good to uh, bring you in for some conversation as well. And so as we talked about um, this passage with Mary getting the news uh, from the angel today, you've mentioned that the story uh, from your point of view has lots of layers. And so could you tell us a little about that? I think we can sometimes gloss over the story of Mary but we have within the story, Mary's response to the angel and her deliberate consent to bearing the Christ child. Um, I think that sometimes we can default to like a very simplistic celebration of this mm. linear story where this happens, an angel appeared to Mary, Mary became pregnant, and then Jesus saves the world. But if we take our time and really dig in, we can see so much more about the Advent story and the unexpected ways in which God invites us to have hope. So, in, I mean, this is a familiar story, but in the first chapter of Luke, we have a teenager who's visited by an angel in the middle of the night. And this had to be terrifying because angels don't look like the little images that we see on Christmas cards. They were terrifying creatures that were almost um, too hard to explain. Mm. And yet, we know the outcome, so we often gloss over and we like this sanitized version of an angel and we take away the fear. But what we know about the Christmas story isn't necessarily what we feel about the Christmas story. We know the end of the story that we and the world have salvation, but I'll be honest, the world seems pretty dark right now. It's very privileged mm -hmm. that I can work from home most days. Zach is working in the building but the students are remote so it's safer but it's just sad and we're seeing innocent people being harmed through no fault of their own so when we go back to the christmas story when the angel first speaks to mary and tells her that she's going to bear the christ child mary doesn't say yes and she doesn't say no she stops the angel and is like what and asks the question and that is a remarkable response Mary has the boldness as a young teenage girl to stop an angel and stop what he is saying so she can ask a question. And I think that it's really important we can learn from Mary because Mary asked the angel to slow down, especially because if we go back a bit, Zechariah had been chastised for questioning an angel in a similar situation only a few verses earlier in this chapter of Luke. But yet Mary asked for more details. And the angel gave her a few more details, not all of them, but a few. And then the angel waited for her to respond. And that's when Mary said yes. And she said yes without really knowing what was going to happen. She knew the outcome, but she sure as heck didn't know about the messy middle. Yeah, and that, that messy middle part seems to be where we are for this uh, Advent and Christmas season, don't you think? I do. I think we're in a messy middle right now and it's going to take a long time. I joke about um, the before times before COVID, but this is the messy middle and we're all really desperate for information and to know what will happen and more certainty and more final answers. Yeah. And it strikes me though, that's kind of what Advent is though. Um, it's that messy middle. Uh, it's dark. We're lighting candles. Um, we yearn to see some hope again. And all the while, we know, as you said, you know, we know the end of the story. We know Jesus did come. Uh, we know Jesus will be coming again. Uh, and here we are in the middle with all of this stuff around us uh, that makes it really, uh, I think, challenging uh, to move toward Christmas this year. Mm -hmm. I think that we are Mary. Yes, God loves all of us and each of us individually and as a whole. And God uses us to spread grace throughout the world. And yet we're more like Mary in that we are called to say yes to hope in the messy middle. Mary's questions highlight the uncertainty in her present and her future. So for her, it's like the already and the not yet and the coming again is all happening all at once. And Mary wants a little more information before stepping out. And yet, the story throughout the biblical narrative is people stepping out in hope where they have a glimpse of what may be, but they don't really know. 
like Moses didn't know what was going on when he saw the burning bush and like all the things that were going to happen. And he didn't know when he was out in the wilderness. Even though Jesus was the son of God and fully human and fully divine, we have to wonder if he truly knew all of the details as he was living his life and the journey to the cross and to the resurrection. Hmm. It really, it, and maybe this is true of the life of faith in general, maybe Advent really is just about uh, opening ourselves to hope, even when it's hard to find. I had a friend once, he, um, he grew up in a, we worked together a long, long time ago, and he grew up in a church, um, and it didn't necessarily have an active faith, but he didn't not have a faith. His church had rejected him. And once we were chatting and he talked about like not hearing God. And I said, yeah, that happens to me a lot. And so it's almost about the discipline of waiting and being patient because I know that God is there, even if I may not feel God in the moment. And I think that that may be our Advent season this year. We know God is here and we're seeing glimpses of God in unexpected places. Mm. And the assurance of our faith is that we have hope even when things are unseen. Yeah. And, and thus we can sing joy to the world, mm -hmm. even when things look a little bit dark outside. April, thank you for joining us today. It's good to be with you. Miss you all. Yes, it's been some kind of year, but in the midst of a pandemic and everything else going on in the world, even when we can't gather in person, even with our traditions and routines upended, we can still sing of joy for Emmanuel. God with us is always with us and will come again into our hearts this year. Amen. I invite you into a time of prayer and we'll begin with Zach and the refrain we've been singing during Advent. Let us pray. Most holy God, the mystery of your eternal word took flesh among us in Jesus Christ. At the message of an angel, Mary placed her life at the service of your will. Filled with the light of your spirit, she became a temple of your word. Strengthen us by her example, that we may always be ready to do your will and welcome into our lives Jesus Christ, our Lord. Come, Emmanuel, and be our comfort, our rest, and our peace. God, we thank you for the order and beauty of your creation, for coming in Jesus Christ to share our life, for the place you have given us in your continuing creation, for the promise of peace among nations and justice for all people. Almighty God, prepare the world for your rule. We long for the day when there shall be no more crying or tears and death will be destroyed. Help us to share the ministry of Christ and be agents of his compassion. Especially we pray for the nations of the earth and for peace in the world, for victims and survivors of violence, for those who are sick and are suffering and those who care for them for our families and friends, and for the church and those who serve. Gracious God, your servant Mary discovered new life growing within her and knew it to be your promised presence. In tender reverence for the holy mystery of your incarnation, 
may we be as a womb for your blessed presence, ready to receive and nourish your word in our lives, open to the stirrings of your spirit within us. May we faithfully bear your love in the world, that by your grace Christ may be born in us. And we continue our prayer as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, his name is called Emmanuel, God with us. I hope you'll join us on Christmas Eve at 7 o'clock right here on this YouTube channel. We will have an extended musical prelude thanks to Zach Casperson and Kathy Donovan. And the service will conclude with Silent Night by Candlelight. And you may want to dim the lights and have a candle nearby for that. As you go through this week, remember that even if hope is hard to find, the joy of Christ's coming is always present. And as you go through this week, may God, who is eternal love, incarnate word, and abiding spirit, be with you, be with us all, in every moment. Amen. Thank you. 